So it's the end of the 1962 AFL season, and Houston Oilers quarterback George Blanda has just finished a record-breaking 42 interception campaign in just 14 starts. On average, that's three picks every game. But things don't always work out on average. How are you imagining this season went for Houston? Bottom of the standings, coaches getting fired, fans burning jerseys. Turns out, the Oilers were a bit of a juggernaut. Despite the turnovers, Houston claimed the second best record in the league and a spot in the AFL championship game. A familiar place for Bland and the Oilers, having won the last two in 1960 and 61. So, for those keeping track at home, that's 27 touchdowns, 42 interceptions, 11 wins, two championships, and one chance at a three-peat. George Blanda, you dog. But how does something like this even happen? The most recent attempt at the interception crown came in 2019 when Jameis Winston threw 30 passes to the wrong team. A feat that a 2018 SB Nation article said would be so egregious in the modern game that it would be grounds to murder the guy. But in comparison to Blanda, Winston's 30 picks in three more games almost looks conservative. Even though Jameis threw 12 fewer picks and actually had a positive touchdown to interception ratio, his Tampa Bay Buccaneers went 7-9 that year and missed the playoffs. Head coach Bruce Arians, when assessing Winston's play at the end of the year, said, There's so much good and so much outright terrible. Less recently, Vinny Testaverde scored second on the all-time single-season interceptions list when he threw 35 picks in his 1988 sophomore season, also in Tampa. But unlike Winston, Testaverde dropped in only 13 touchdowns en route to a 5-11 record. Bucks fans weren't shy in expressing their distaste for their young quarterback, and it definitely didn't help Testaverde's case when he admitted to being colorblind in an interview that year. But this is all what you'd expect to happen when you throw 30 or more picks in a single season, much less over 40. A mediocre to bad record, angry fans, and questions from management on whether the starting quarterback really is the guy. But here's what Oilers owner Bud Adams said of his quarterback George Blanda. He was the perfect fit for the start of the AFL, joining our league from the NFL and displaying the ability to lead a high-flying offense. To understand the difference between these quarterbacks, we have to focus on the first part of that quote. It was the start of the AFL. Blanda was playing in a different league at a time when football looked different from what it does today. Look no further than the fact Blanda would be throwing touchdown passes and then staying on the field to kick his own extra point. As the story goes, the AFL was created right as professional football's popularity was reaching baseballs in the United States. More cities wanted football teams, and the NFL's Chicago Cardinals wanted out from under the popular Bears franchise's spotlight in the same city. When potential owners were denied expansion teams by NFL Commissioner Burt Bell at the time, these businessmen created their own league instead. Where the NFL showcased straightforward, high-powered running attacks and more familiar logos, the AFL was marketed as the deaf-defying, wide-open version of the sport. The AFL asked audiences, do you want to go to the matinee or the circus? By the numbers, the new AFL seemingly lived up to its reputation. From 1960 to 1962, when compared to their NFL counterparts, AFL teams scored more points, ran more plays, passed more often and for more yards per game, ran the ball less efficiently, and threw more interceptions per attempt. But the reality might have been that the AFL teams were just looser with the ball, and a larger disparity in talent forced worse teams who got behind early to pass more in order to catch up, creating a vicious cycle. In 1960, following the league's first season, or just two years before Blanda's record-breaking season, which, side note, that's a great way to track time generally, Frank Trapuca set the tone for the AFL by breaking the single-season interception record at the time with 34 for the Denver Broncos, a number that still ranks third all-time. And though Trapuca also led the league in passing yards, his Broncos sat at the bottom of the standings. That Denver team actually got off to a pretty good start, going 4-2 and two through their first six. But after never throwing more than two interceptions in a game, Trapuca finished the year averaging three per contest, just like Blanda would do two years later. But where Blanda's team would get on a roll as his interception total grew, Trapuca and the Broncos exposed themselves as an inefficient offense and porous defense. 
After a decent start, they couldn't win a game in their last eight, finishing four, nine, and one. They ranked last and second to last in net yards per attempt through the air and on the ground respectively, and their defense, poetically, flipped these numbers in their incompetencies, letting teams run through them and throw it over them all year long. At the same time, Blanda's Oilers sit at the top of the Eastern Conference with a 10-4 record and would go on to win the first AFL championship. And then the next one. Blanda put up two 22 interception seasons in a row, which is a decent amount for sure, but he was also backing it up with a positive touchdown to interception ratio throughout both years and an AFL MVP award in 1961. And while his 61 season is probably his most impressive statistically, the 62 season was his masterpiece. Coming into the 1962 season, the Oilers must have felt good about their chances of winning their third championship in a row. Houston held the best point differential in the league over the last two years by far, and were led by Blanda, who was a gunslinger in its truest form, leading both the AFL and NFL in touchdowns by a wide margin while also landing second in passing yards behind Johnny Unitas. The Oilers' season got off to a good and strangely historic start as they beat the Buffalo Bills 28-23 in Week 1 behind a six-interception performance from Blanda. Six interceptions. In a win. You know why that sounds crazy? Because this is literally the only time that it's ever happened. On September 9th, 1962, George Blanda threw 30 passes and 20% of them went to the other team and he went home the winning quarterback. The Oilers were able to win, occasionally in spite of Blanda, because they were built on a solid run game and good defense. The rest of the team could keep them in games, even if Blanda couldn't always keep control of the ball. But to be fair to old George, it wasn't all just gaudy interception numbers week in and week out with a good team around him. It was some of that, for sure, but he also flipped the script from week one in Houston's fifth game of the season against the Titans of New York. While less incredible than the six interception victory, this was Blanda's second six TD game of his career, putting him in elite company as just one of eight quarterbacks all time who have had multiple six touchdown performances. In the next one, Blanda did something perhaps even more improbable for him than throwing six touchdowns or six interceptions, throwing zero of either. Oddly enough, this was Blanda's only zero interception performance of the season, and it ended in a 20-10 defeat to the Denver Broncos. Six games in, and Blanda has 14 touchdowns to his 15 interceptions, and the Oilers are 4-2 on the season. With only eight more games left, Blanda was going to have to hurry to get 27 more picks. But that's exactly what he did, following up his zero interceptions with a second six interception game of the year, this one against the Dallas Texans. Led by all-pro quarterback Len Dawson, the Texans were separating themselves in the standings in the other conference and would eventually be what came between Blanda and a three-peat in the championship game. Houston would ultimately redeem themselves from the 31-7 loss with a 14-6 victory in the next week where Blanda didn't play like a disaster. This loss to Dallas would also mark the final time the Oilers would drop a game in the regular season, going on to win their next seven. Across these seven consecutive wins, Blanda put up 13 touchdowns and 21 interceptions. Five of those picks came in Game 12 in Houston's rematch against the Broncos and Frank Trapuca, who, wouldn't you know it, threw five interceptions himself as well. And to make matters worse for Denver, their second-string quarterback, George Shaw, threw three picks of his own on just seven attempts. Where the earlier contest saw Blanda and Trapuca on their best behavior, combining for just one total turnover, this one had a combined 15, 6 for Houston and 9 for Denver. At that moment, Blanda was helping push his Oilers into their third consecutive championship game, and Trapuca was just trying to keep his Broncos from collapsing again. But when we look back on it now, it feels more like a torch passing from one interception king to another. If the 1962 season was Blanda's interception Sunday, then the championship game was not only a cherry on top, but extra whipped cream with sprinkles too. The AFL championship that year was, by all accounts, a thriller. The double overtime game was the longest in league history at the time, 
and remains the longest championship game ever. But for our purposes, let's focus in on how Blanda ended the year throwing five more interceptions, which, get this, is the same number of picks he threw in the 1961 championship game, which the Oilers ended up winning 10-3 over the San Diego Chargers. But unlike last year's championship, Houston's opponents were able to take advantage of Blanda's mistakes. After two first-half picks that stalled out promising drives, including one on Dallas's four-yard line, which the Texans eventually turned into three points, the Oilers found themselves in a 17-0 hole. Still, Blanda and Houston never wavered from their high-powered aerial offense, as he tied his season-high in pass attempts with 46. Houston would go on to claw their way back to tie the game, even with a couple more inopportune Blanda picks, as their defense continued to bend, not break, and their offense slowly started finding the end zone. In fact, the Oilers actually had a chance to win the game in regulation on a George Blanda field goal, but it was blocked, which sent the game into overtime and gave Blanda one more opportunity to throw an interception, and throw an interception he did. Meanwhile, Blanda and Houston very nearly became three-time champions off the back of the highest interception total in single season history. And if you ask me, it almost seemed that the elusive football god stepped in to ensure a repeat wouldn't happen following one of the most infamous passing seasons ever. So will we ever see anyone break Blanda's record? Probably not. Blanda's interception record came at a time when football looked completely different. Passing was more vertically focused, and defenders had more freedom to, well, defend receivers, especially compared to today's game. Bruce Arians' reaction to Jameis Winston's 30 interceptions is also telling, using those as a statistical point to call out to all of his downright terrible play as a quarterback. Could we imagine seeing the Bucks' coaching staff give Winston the freedom to throw 17 more picks throughout the season? The passing game, both the offensive philosophies around it and the way players defend it, has changed dramatically. Blanda's interception record is amazing for so many reasons, like the fact his team was one of the best in the league during the year he did it, or that in the one game he didn't throw any picks, he ended up losing. The most amazing part, to me at least, is that while we may eventually see other quarterbacks challenge for the honor in the future, nobody will have the long leash and or success that Blanda enjoyed en route to actually getting to that 42 number. To put a bow on it, Blanda's record-breaking interception season is a beautiful and chaotic time capsule from one of the league's first legends. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like if you did enjoy it and consider subscribing to the channel so you can catch the next one. Thanks. Bye.